What's going on YouTube? So as you probably know, the Outback is a very important vehicle to Subaru and is also a vehicle very well liked by consumers. With its full redesign last year, both of those things are only increasing, which is why we're taking a look at the latest 2021 example today to see what additional upgrades are now being thrown in. So with that all said, let's go ahead and see what makes this Subaru's bestseller year after year. All right, so let's kick things off with the exterior. Now, of course, like I said, this is fully redesigned last year. So as you'd expect, there's not really gonna be any ch big changes to the design. So up in the front, you've got that typical Subaru grill, uh, which has kind of got a soft round shape to it. And then most of the models will have the silver bar that runs through the top. But if you choose the Onyx edition, uh, this will actually be a smoked color. And then the silver or the chrome around the outside will be blacked out. Now in your upper end trim levels, you also have the silver accent down here at the bottom. And then off here to the side, we have our LED headlights. And this is one of our 2021 changes because Subaru has nicely included adaptive abilities on all the trim levels for 2021. So they all are fully LED with adaptive abilities, which is a really nice touch to have. Finally, down here at the bottom, we have LED fog lights, and that comes on all but the base model. Now, of course, the Outback is a rugged vehicle. Um, so with that, Subaru does include the cladding, of course, in the front, as well as around the wheel arches. And also because of that, Subaru doesn't include super large wheel options. So with this fully loaded touring model, as well as the Limited, you have this 18-inch contrast alloy. If you go for the Onyx Edition, that also has an 18-inch alloy, but it's blacked out. And then finally, at the bottom end of the lineup, you have 17-inch alloys. And jumping up here to your mirrors, you will notice with this touring model, we have the kind of upscale satin silver accent to kind of class things up. We do also have the LED turn signal. And as far as the other features, uh, they're kind of spread out between all the different trim levels. Uh, but here with this touring model, of course, we've got all of them. So we have power folding, we have blind spot monitoring. Uh, we also have the optional auto dimming. Now, like Drew mentioned in the front, the Outback is kind of like an off-roady, kind of outdoorsy type of vehicle. So, of course, you're going to have these big roof rails on the side and plenty of more black cladding here in the back that this black model kind of disguises very well. Now, as far as other things that you're going to notice as far as the rear design, you are going to have these nice taillights, which were new last year. Uh, that is mostly LED. The brake light is LED. However, the turn signal and reverse light is going to be incandescent. Dropping down, we have a big Touring XT badge. And then also down here at the bottom, on the higher end models, you're going to find this nice silver diffuser, which I think really classes up the design. Now, Subaru always knocks it out of the park when it comes to the safety systems, and this Outback is no exception since their entire EyeSight suite is standard on all of the models. Additionally, the Limited and Touring models will also throw in rear auto braking. But anyway, that's going to sum up the exterior design for this Outback. However, I know there's a really luxurious cabin on the inside, especially on this touring model. So let's go ahead and check that out. But before we do that, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. So on the 2021 Outback, you will find Subaru Smart Entry System on the limited trim and above. And this does come with their typical key fob. And of course, when you choose that smart entry system, you will get sensors behind the door handle. So all you have to do is just grab behind them. And taking a first look inside of this cabin. Uh, as you may remember from last year's full redesign, it really changes just about everything about this cabin. And it really gave it a upscale look, especially here with this fully loaded touring model. Now, of course, every trim level can't be as plush as this Touring. So on your base and premium models, those are going to come with cloth seating. Your Onyx Edition comes with the StarTex um, water-resistant material. 
Limited comes with real leather, and then the fully loaded Touring comes with this Napa leather, which of course is a very high-end grade of leather. Now as far as your color options, you have slate black on your base model. The premium through the Limited come in slate black, titanium gray, or warm ivory. And then finally, when you choose to go for the fully loaded Touring, that's where you get the exclusive Java Brown. And turning over here to your door trim, you're going to find that same brown leather up here on the armrest with the color contrast stitching detail. All of this center area is also covered in leather, again with a color contrast stitching detail. And then the top part will be soft touch. Over here you will find two person memory seating on both limited and touring, as well as four fully automatic windows. Then coming down here to the seats themselves, we have the 10-way power adjusting seat, which comes on almost every single trim level. It does have two-way lumbar support, and we also have a manual thigh extension. Then like I was saying, this is uh, Napa leather, so you're talking about some of the finest leather that you can get in the auto industry. And indeed, it does feel really, really smooth, uh, very soft and supple, and I like the color contrast stitching. So like I mentioned, when you first peek into the cabin, you're definitely impressed by how upscale everything looks. But once you actually get inside and start touching things, it does support that because you do have very nice materials on board. So across the upper dash, this is all gonna be a soft touch plastic. Um, however, here in the middle, we have a big swath of a brown leatherette material with color contrast stitching, and that does trace all the way around the screen and out to the other side. Now down below that on this touring model, we have a piano black accent, more leatherette, and then uh, even more leatherette that runs through here where your knee is going to touch against. And of course, in typical Subaru fashion, everything in here does fit together absolutely seamlessly. Now start up your limited and above. Just press the button to start. <laughs> So as far as your gauges are concerned, this is basically the typical Subaru setup. You have your two analog gauges and then you have a 4.2 inch multifunction display right there in the middle. And you can use the steering wheel mounting controls to cycle through some basic information. Now, um, a lot of other Subarus, as you may know, have a second like six inch display up there on the top of the dashboard. But here on the Outback, that's actually gonna be integrated into the top of this main display. Now we'll talk about the main display a little later in the video. But as far as this helper display, you have several different sections, including things like your weather, X mode, and stuff like that, that you can cycle through up here. And returning back over here to the steering wheel, of course we do have electric power assisted steering, and Subaru does throw in a leather wrapped wheel on all but the base model. Now as far as the steering wheel heating, that's gonna be included on both the 2.5 and the XT Touring models, but only the XT Limited trim. And then the wheel itself is gonna be manual tilt and telescoping. But now let's go ahead and talk about interior storage because this is a family vehicle after all. So we'll start underneath the center console. This does come in two different tiers. So you have a little bit of storage up here on the top tier. You can press the second button and that will reveal the broader amount of space. Now it looks like this is pretty decent, not super large, but we do have a felt lining at the bottom. A lot of you guys will be happy to see we actually have a CD player on board and then you also have a 12 volt outlet as well. Now I'll go ahead and get out our coupons. It's like we can pull them in half here and kind of push them in. Uh, they do fit, although not super well. It could be a little bit bigger. Now up in the front, we have two very large and deep cup holders and Subaru has thrown in a little adjustable piece to kind of bring that up a little bit. And then over here, you will find a wireless phone charging pad, which is available as an option, as well as two charging USB ports. Now coming back to the shifter, this is just your traditional style shifter. So you can pull back for drive. You can bump over here to the left if you wanna do some manual shifting. And Subaru does nicely include power shifters actually on every single trim, not just this XT version. And when we go into reverse, you will find a standard backup camera across all the models. 
and we do have active trajectory as well as that uh, rear auto braking system. When you reverse, the mirrors do tilt down, at least here on the touring trim level. And then there's another thing I want to point out. With the touring as well as the Onyx edition, uh, there is no 360 degree camera. However, there is a front facing camera. So you can press this button right here and this will bring up your front camera, which will help you in parking or in off-road situations. So basically you have a 180 degree camera instead of a 360. And then right next to the shifter, you have your electronic parking brake. All right, so now that's basically gonna bring us up here to this gigantic display, since much of what's left inside the interior is located up here in this panel. Now, what you're looking at is the large 11.6 inch touch display. This is standard on all but the very base model, which instead comes with two seven inch displays. Now to kind of go through some of the features here, I'm gonna start down at the bottom, which is gonna be dedicated to our climate controls. Uh, this part will always be the climate controls. And Subaru does brag that this actually has a separate processor from the main uh, infotainment system, which will always keep the climate controls pretty speedy. Now you do have some physical buttons along the side to adjust your temperature, which I think is nice. Then you can adjust things like your zones and your fan speeds right here in the display. If you click this button, this is gonna bring up uh, both your temperature as well as your seat controls. So uh, you have heated seats standard on the premium model and above, which is the vast majority of them. But if you want ventilation, it's gonna require getting this fully loaded touring. And I'm gonna go ahead and come up here to our knob. This is for the 576 watt Harman Kardon sound system here on the fully loaded touring model, as well as the limited trim. So let's go ahead and take a sample. Yeah, overall sound quality is really, really good. Definitely impressed by this sound system. Okay, so without further ado, let's go ahead and kind of dig into the Starlink system a little bit. I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail about this because we do have a tech help video available if you want to learn more about it. But as you can see, this is very similar to what you have in other Subaru models, just oriented a little bit different. You have the tiles with different apps in them. Here with the touring model, we do have the built-in navigation system, which is powered by TomTom. Tom. And as you can see, the graphics look pretty nice and the display is pretty responsive. Now, as far as other important things to mention, you have both standard Android Auto and Apple CarPlay abilities. And then I went ahead and jumped into the settings here to look at one of the new 2021 features. And that is our rear seat reminder system being standard across all the trim levels. So when you get out of the vehicle, it reminds you if you have opened and closed the back doors that there might be a child or an animal in the back. Um, and then also new for 2021, it can detect um, if people are not wearing their seatbelt in all the seats, not just the front ones. Now moving on up, you do have a frameless auto dimming mirror with a built-in compass and three Helmic Universal remotes on the limited and above. Now up at the very top, you'll find a standard size moonroof. Um, there is not a panoramic option since Subaru owners typically uh, stick things on the roof like a canoe or something like that. Um, and this is going to be standard on your 2.5 Touring and then your XT Limited and XT Touring. Now, of course, the Outback is a family vehicle, so here in the rear seats, this is a very important part of this vehicle, and I am very, very impressed sitting back here. First of all, I am extremely comfortable thanks to these lovely seats here in the rear, and there's also a lot of space back here as well. So you're going to have 40 inches of rear legroom, 39 inches of rear headroom, which is about the same as the Subaru Forester. It doesn't really have very many competitors to compare to, but definitely a lot of space. And behind Drew's seating position, I have, I would say, seven inches of your leg room, and my feet can slide up underneath the seat. Now, as far as your features, of course, this is a loaded model, so you're gonna have quite a few. You're gonna have vents that are gonna be standard, and then dropping down, we have uh, two charging USB ports, and then we also have two stage heated rear seats. That's gonna be standard on the limited and touring trims or on any of the XT trims. And then 
if you fold down the armrest, you do have cup holders inside. And I also want to mention that you can also recline these rear seats. Now walking up to the tailgate of this Outback, Subaru was nice enough to include a hands-free one on the limited trims and higher. So all you have to do is wave your like hand and put your elbow up next to the emblem and it will open up. And once it does, you're gonna find a quite impressive amount of space. It has 33 cubic feet of space behind the second row seats. That expands to 76 cubic feet if you fold them. If you're curious as to how that compares with the Forester, that's very, very similar, uh, but just a tad smaller. And as far as how Subaru has finished it back here, we have a really nice carpeting along the floor. And if we lift it up, you will find a tiny bit more space. And then off to the side, we do have a net. And you also have your levers to fold these second row seats 60-40 split as well as a cargo cover. Now of course on this fully loaded model we do have four-way power adjusting seats and then in front of the passenger if we open up the glove box you know this is where I like to stick the coupon so I'm very pleasantly surprised with what this Outback has to offer since it's really nicely felt lined it's very wide and it's also very deep so if we didn't have a bunch of other junk in this you could fit a lot of stuff in here and you do also have this little storage cubby right here as well. Now up top we do have a sun visor with lighting as well as a mirror and you can also detach it as well as extend. Having driven plenty of times the standard engine that's in a lot of Subarus, when you get into the XT, you're definitely going to notice a difference. So like I'm saying, this is the XT um, and this comes with the new 2.4 liter turbocharged boxer four cylinder. Um, and, and power is really good, it's up about 80 horsepower over the standard engine. Um, so definitely, like I said, you're going to notice the difference. Yeah, for sure. That's we, last year we actually took the you know the liberty to drive both of them. We drove the standard engine as well as the XT, and I will say it's a very substantial upgrade. So if you're really kind of concerned about maybe a little bit more performance than just the point A to point B type of deal, I would highly suggest taking a look at the XT. Now, if you do go for that regular uh, version, that's going to be a 2.5 liter boxer four cylinder, 182 horsepower, and 176 pound feet of torque. Yeah, definitely impressed by the torque when you you know first get off the line. You know, you, it really uh, feels responsive in the way that they tuned both the engine as well as the continuously variable transmission. So, of course, as you know, most Subarus do come with a CVT at this point. Um, but like I said, really, really responsive. I, I'm very impressed by this, especially getting straight off the line. Plus you also have the eight simulated gear changes, which I do appreciate. And you don't have to go full throttle. You know, some of the competition, they won't simulate unless you really go full throttle, but Subaru uh, does the simulation anyways, which allows it to have kind of a more natural feel. Uh, so you don't really notice that you have a CVT. And getting up to speed here, I do want to mention the, you know, this is a touring Outback. Um, so it's not just about the engine, it's also about having a luxury experience in here as well. And I have to say, this is very, very uh, impressive. I've always really enjoyed how this Outback rides. Uh, it really soaks up the bumps just as well as like something like a Subaru Ascent. Um, so really good job from Subaru and I will go ahead and get a sound level reading here going 50 miles per hour. And we're looking at a very impressive 53.2 decibels. Uh, so that once again goes to show you this is a very luxury experience inside of this cabin in the ride quality as well as in the noise level because I think that's even less than the Subaru Ascent.
And that right there uh, is going to be our slam dunk for the day. Like I said, I don't want to reiterate um, too much, but you have just a really, really luxurious experience. This feels like a luxury, you know, crossover, um, but you still have all the capability yeah. that you expect from a Subaru. And then as far as the air ball for today, um, this is a l Touring XT, and we just think that it should have maybe a few special touches on the outside if you choose the XT, uh, because that is kind of your more like performance-oriented model. So maybe some different wheels or uh, some different pieces other than just the badge in the back would have been nice to see on the fully loaded XT versions. Let's go ahead and mention the fuel economy. So before I do that, I do want to mention that, of course, this is a Subaru, so you're going to have standard symmetrical all-wheel drive uh, across the entire lineup, which is impressive. Um, but as far as your standard engine, that's going to come in at 26 city, 33 highway, 29 combined. And if you go for the XT, it's going to drop down to 26 combined. Um, so that's 3 mpg worse um, than the regular engine, but I have to say it's probably worth it. I should also mention the driving dynamics. Um, with the XT, it's not really that much different per se than the regular version of the Outback. Um, that's not a complaint, it's just that the regular version of the Outback with this new generation really put a lot more emphasis on driving dynamics. Now, as far as the pricing is concerned for this Outback, um, Prices are going to increase about 150 bucks this year, so pretty insignificant price increase. So the base model is going to start at 26,795, the premium 29,045, uh, limited 33,595, the Onx edition is 35,145, and then the 2.5i Touring is 37,495, XT limited 37,995, and XT Touring. Top dog, which is what we have here, is 39,945. Now this one does also have a few little option packages on it, plus the destination charge of 1,050 uh, brings this one to 42,133 bucks, which is literally like the highest point you can get in um, this Outback lineup. And I'm still very impressed with all the luxury you're going to have in here, um, as well as just the whole package for that price point. That's right. And as far as should you pay the extra money and get the XT over the regular model, I think it just depends on your priorities. Like I said, we have driven the regular model before. It's perfectly acceptable for the needs of most people, and you are going to get a little bit better fuel economy. But if you want a little bit of you know extra sport, uh, you want that extra speed that really feels nice, especially in a touring model, uh, I think the XT is worth the upgrade. Well guys, that's going to be all for this in-depth review of the 2021 Subaru Outback XT Touring. We really appreciate you watching, and if you've made it this far in the video, hopefully that means you enjoyed watching. So be sure to hit that subscribe button down below, and when you do, you'll find tons of other automotive content, especially a lot of content on this Subaru lineup, as well as its competitive set. Anyway, we'll catch you next time as we sample more of the latest automotive deluxes.